Mama Scrapbook. Hey guys, and welcome back. I have another uh, process video here for you, another eight and a half by 11 process video. And I am starting off this time with a piece of eight and a half by 11 uh, watercolor paper. It's just, I cut it down to eight and a half by 11. I didn't buy it at this size. I have like this huge, I think it's like uh, 18 by 24 or something like that pad of watercolor paper. So yeah, I just cut it down. And I'm using a Heidi Swap stencil and some mustard seed distress ink. Oh, excuse me. And my ink thingy. <laughs> and I'm just pushing it through some of the hearts here. Um, and I'm being really careful to only get the ink inside the heart. And I am not trying to shift my stencil, but it is a tiny bit. So I just kind of went into a faster speed because this time, this uh, part took a little bit of time. So what I'm doing now, this is a technique that I have not tried yet before, but I did buy this product when it came out. It's the Tim Holtz Distress Glaze. Um, I had ordered it when it came out, I believe, or I had bought it at my local scrapbook store, something like that. And um, I just decided I had never used it. I don't know why I bought it. I buy a lot of Tim Holtz things, even though I don't really craft in that style. I, it's just like an obsession of mine, I guess. I have a problem with that. I don't know. So anyways, <laughs> I put that distress glaze over it. And what the purpose of that is, is um, to kind of waterproof anything that you put it over. And so... You know, I definitely, I said a prayer and went for it, and I'm doing this smushing stuff technique over the yellow hearts, and as you can see, it resisted it beautifully, because if you miss, mix yellow with that bluish green color, you're not going to get a very pretty color, and so I was definitely scared, but it came out beautifully, and um, what you saw me doing there, I just added another tone of gelato or around some of the hearts. It's not a huge difference, but... Um, you know, there's a couple different shades of blue in there now. And so I really loved how that came out. And um, I picked those colors specifically because I wanted to use my Chamel's True Stories collection. Uh, I haven't bought anything new in a pretty long time, even though CJ just rolled around and I have kind of expressed my feelings on that in another video. Um, <laughs> but I am really having a good time using up all these things that I did go crazy and buy, you know, when they were coming out. And so... Um, yeah, it's nice to be able to get a chance to use them and enjoy them now. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to map my photo on this colorful piece of paper. Um, I like to, when I'm using a collection like this, if I don't know what colors for sure I want to bring in, I like to use something colorful somewhere on the layout um, with with a lot of the colors of the collection in it, just so that way I know my bases are covered and I can use whatever die cut I see fit or whatnot. So. So I'm going to go ahead and map that photo again in kind of that bluish green uh, paper with the little polka dots on it. And then I had this idea to cut out some of these frames and use them as embellishments. Um, but then I remembered I have this plastic sleeve that I have a bunch of cut aparts in. Like I just went through a bunch of my paper one day and grabbed all the cut aparts out so that I would stop hoarding them and they'd be out and I could use them. And I remembered I had pulled some from this collection. So I had to look at those first. But um, I am going to end up going with those photo frames in the end. I just wanted to look through the 6x6 six six pad because I wanted a yellow element paper layer in that um, photo cluster <laughs> of papers. And so I just found this one in the 6x6 six six pad and I'm just going to cut a band of it and cut it into a fishtail banner. And it was hard for me to tell if it was straight or not with that torn edge at the bottom. So I'm just going to line it up with my grid thing under here and cut a little fishtail in the end of it. And I just felt like that kind of um, made more sense, like why the yellow hearts were in the background. <laughs> so I'm gonna pop up my photo here. And uh, I'm using these tiny little pop dots because that's what was on my desk. <laughs> and I'm gonna stick my photo down right there and just kind of fold up the layers just a little bit just to add some movement in there behind the photo. So I like to do that. Um, so everything's just not so flat. And I am still just loving the way that the background looks. <laughs> I was really impressed with that distress glaze. So here I am with these photo frames um, and I'm going to cut three of them out, I believe. Uh, bless you, you okay? 
so, um, yeah, here I go. I don't know what I was doing for that moment. But, yeah, I'm just going to take my trimmer and, you know, cut down the the rows or whatever you call them <laughs> um, of the ones that I think I'm going to want to use. And I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to leave like a small little border on them. I love this delighted icon that runs through this line. So I knew for sure I wanted to use that. And then I wanted to bring in some more of that red for some contrast so that everything wasn't so blue and so green. And I thought for a second that I might want to use this gray card because I can just never resist gray. I love gray, but uh, I don't, that one does not end up making it in the end. So the way I'm positioning them now, it was kind of like I was trying to save myself a weird gap under the, that yellow banner. Um, but I will have to find a different way to deal with that because um, I'm not going to end up using that, that gray card. And I don't even think I end up using this one, to be honest. I end up using this yellow one. Just try, I was trying my hardest to make the gray work, if you can't tell. <laughs> but I think my thing was I didn't want to bring in any any pink, like too much pink. If there was, a, like, there's a little tiny bit of pink in that delighted uh, photo thingy, you know, photo Polaroid thing. Um, but I didn't want it to be a really strong color on the layout, and so I don't end up going with that. And so I'm going to play with the die cuts now, and honestly, I don't think any of the die cuts from this collection make it on the page. I think I play with them here, and then I'm thinking I'm going to use them, but once I go through some more of my stash, I don't end up using any of the die cuts from this collection. Not because I don't love them, just because, um, I don't know, I just kind of felt like a lot of them weren't relevant to the picture. So like I would have used that rocket, even though my dog had nothing to do with a rocket. I thought it was cute and he's a boy and I don't know when else I would use that rocket, but I don't end up using it in the end. I liked it though. I would have used it. And I don't end up using that stop and look either. I thought maybe of using that because it had green in it and there's a lot of green in the photo from the grass, but I just also figured I didn't want that to be another color on the layout. So I'm going through this chipboard from Pink Paisley. Um, I think it was from the Hello Sunshine collection. I don't know, I picked it up at Tuesday morning for really cheap. And so I'm gonna cut some pieces out of there. Um, and a lot of the pieces had like that yellow and teal color in them, so it went pretty well. I grabbed a couple hearts and stuck them down there. And um, that hello banner, I don't know if I said that. And then I have that circle chipboard piece that's going to go over on that red frame over there. Um, now these are the Amy Tangerine uh, chipboard pieces. And those are from Cut and Paste. And you can see my first sheet there is like pretty much empty. And I picked up another sheet again at Tuesday morning. Um, and I wanted to use the speech bubble that says I love you but I wanted to back it and I wanted to use a, that red color just to bring some more in so that photo frame wasn't just all by its lonesome. So I grabbed this uh, red diagonal paper and put it behind it and I loved how that came out and the chipboard was gray so it kind of helped with my little gray obsession with this layout for some reason. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and stick these photo frames down and kind of stagger them and actually I only ended up using two. So that wood piece that I'm playing with is actually from True Stories, but I'm not gonna end up using it. <laughs> um, this is the Dear Lizzie sticker book from Fifth and Frolic, so I still have a lot of that collection left and that collection also had a lot of yellows and that teal aqua color in it. And so I just grabbed this like super thin border and it's yellow with like a teal squiggly thing in it and I just, um, cut it in half and I'm just going to place it on each diagonal corner and it doesn't really add that much but it closes off the layout which I struggle with like I always feel like my layouts have to be closed in especially if they're white like this um, like on a white background so yeah <laughs> So these are the cork uh, pieces from the first Chamel collection, I believe. Uh, are they from this one? They might be from this one. And um, actually, I think they are from this one, yeah, because there's a light bulb and clouds and stuff. But I, I can't make it work. I did, I, I knew I wanted to include cork on this layout. That's why I pulled these out. But I just couldn't make any of these work. They were all just scaled a little too big for what I wanted on this layout. So I'm going to put those away and I'm going to grab these Studio Calico cork uh, pieces. They're like chevrons and arrows or just 
or two different types of arrows, however you want to call them. And I'm going to stick three of these ones at the top and one of the regular arrows at the bottom. And I love those cork pieces. I am so sad I am almost out. Oh, I use those quite a bit. I've slowed down now though because I'm hoarding, but I have used them quite a bit. Now to bring my cork in for the middle, I'm going to grab these um, cork thickers. And I actually got these uh, when Lisa, Maggie Milo from the Pink Camera, she had me test out um, her kits when she was starting them. And she sent me these in the kits. So thanks, Lisa. <laughs> they're coming. They're still coming in handy. I was out of S's, so I did have to kind of do some surgery on the 8 there. Um, and then, you know, they're kind of a wide, thicker for this size of page and so I just overlap them and it condensed the title down to more of a size that I wanted so and I just spelled out handsome with them and then I'm using that chip word um, as part of my title from the pink paisley pack that says hello so it says hello handsome because he was he's just so cute look at him he's adorable he was still uh a really small puppy at this point he, we had just had him a couple days and this picture was taken with a GoPro and so it's kind of funny like um, it's like fish-eyed almost the photo I don't know but he looks so cute so I just uh, threw in some leaves there that was from the fifth and frolic sticker book and just layered two of them on that side um, just to have a little sprout of embellishment over there um, and what am I doing now I think I'm straightening up or something I don't know if you guys could see how messy my desk is outside of the, the video frame you'd be like whoa <laughs> calm your life down just a tad <laughs> so these are some old Amy Tan clear word stickers and I love them um, and I'm gonna put two actually I'm gonna end up putting three at the bottom but I'll take one up later and you'll see why but I'm gonna put three for now down here at the bottom and I'm going to put one above that. What are you watching over there? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> I'm going to put one above that uh, hello chipboard up there. And, yeah, I really love those. Those were from Cut and Paste as well. And they also had alphas like that, which, oh, I'm seriously hoarding. Because they're just, I can't bring myself to use them. <laughs> I have used quite a bit of them, but I'm low on the important letters, you know. So for a little bit more quirk, I am here again with my heart punches. These are like my best friends in my scrapbooking room. Um, whenever I just need a little something specific in a certain area, I always, I have a bunch of these tiny punches in different shapes and I usually can just punch something in the color I need. So I love that. So I punched two of those cork hearts and then on top of that yellow banner I really wanted to bring in some of that gray color again just because I had that gray speech bubble and it was really the only gray element on the page and so I went through the papers and I found these little banners on one of the pattern papers and I cut two out and it, one says simple and the other one says love so I just layered those with that banner and uh, punched another little cork heart to go there although I'm going to switch that cork heart to the other side and grab this little teal one just to bring up the cork a little bit so it was kind of spread around more and now I am going to do the journaling and this was the one down part to using that distress glaze is because it's a waxy um, substance so none of my pens would write over it none of the ones that I have I tried my sharpie it wouldn't work and so all I did is I took an index card like an unlined index card and wrote my journaling on it cut it out and I'm just going to glue it over top of those lines that I drew and that's why I had to rip up that other little word band <laughs> down there but I mean I'm fine with how it turned out it's fine so I'm going to do some close-ups now thank you guys for sticking with me for another layout I hope you enjoyed it um, I'm definitely getting more comfortable using this eight and a half by eleven size bye and, bye. <laughs> and so um, yeah we shall see what other layouts I can come up with all right guys bye